What a reflection, Spen. I can't see a lot inside oh, there. And there's a lovely big mirror right at the back there. Mm. As, as you can imagine. Mm. No, I mean, it's carbon arc. Uh, runs at, if I try and get this right, it runs at 80 volts at 60 amps. Mm. Um, and it has takes a range of about five miles um, so with that aircraft traveling about 1500 meters this is the uh, local cabling was in quite poor condition with the insulation flaking off so I've done a sympathetic rewire internally uh, to make it safe to use and I'm now looking at the generator um, yeah. and giving that a quick a quick once over and replacing any damaged parts like the fuel pipe, I'm going to service the starter motor as well. Here is the 8 kilowatt generator that goes along with it. The engine in this um, is a 1600cc uh, BMW unit made in 1934. The generator assembly itself dates from 41, but that engine uh, was initially fitted to the BMW. 315-1 uh, sports cars of the era and uh, if you look at them on the internet go go Google that and look at the photographs and they are beautiful they really are beautiful little sports cars but this is the control box this has got all the gubbins in it it's all electromechanical I don't know if you have solid state with bang nonsense no. And if any of your viewers wondering why I'm using a... Uh, yeah, they won't like that spend an adjustable. I know it's the it's tool of last resort, but unfortunately uh, I don't have any metric tools in my toolbox. Mm. So I have to make do. Uh, with I see. Right. So the idea is that when you strike the carbon arc, it needs to be... It needs to keep... Um, a, the, the rods need to keep a set distance about apart and what this motor does because I can is it works the mechanism yeah it works the mechanisms and that actually moves the rods together at a preset rate yeah and then you've got the two knobs here so if you want to make a fine adjustment uh, on your cathode it's that one for inwards and outwards and the anode is that one inwards and outwards And this whole assembly is physically connected to the carbon arc mechanism in here. And um, using this handle here, you, you can make a fine adjustment. You can slide the whole unit backwards and forwards to get it focused. Quite complex. So, so what did we say this handle here was for? The eight? Well, the eight? That, that is, say if the motor burns out, right, you can actually motor the whole thing in by hand. So, yeah. yeah. Um, and um, the anode and the rest of it, do they burn out? Do you know? They very do. Often? Um, on the <coughs> on the plate at the side here, it says sort of the running time is an hour. Which you you might be able to see that it's just down there. It's a bit dark. Yeah. Uh, running time is an hour, uh, but um, according to um, the guys who regularly run this, they run it for two hours with no problems at all. Cables from that big reel. Well, this is from the generator. Yeah. So you've got cables from the generator, these two here. Oh, I see, yeah. Okay. They connect into there, into the negative and the positive. Yeah. And then that's fed up through And slip. what sort of voltage you say this was? Um, this is, well, if we, look, if, we look, if we look on here, we're looking at 60 volts at 80 amps. So the, the unit itself runs on 60 volts. And when the arc is struck, it needs to be around about 60 amps. And that can be adjustable because the, the operator, the searchlight operator, is in communication with the generator operator. Because there's a little, a little Morse key there with uh, a light to say that light flashes with the Morse key that's on the generator. So he can signal, if you like, more voltage. Yeah. So he acknowledges the fact he wants more voltage and then he tweaks it up on the generator. Right, we've ah. moved on to the starter motor yeah. for this okay. BMW. Right. 
So generator. the starter motor on this is quite unusual. I've never come across one like this before because instead of having either a Bendix at this end or a pre-engage, what it does is it throws the whole throws the whole armature forward. Oh, doesn't it? Yeah. And I've never seen that before. Because normally it's um, uh, like the, the gear slides along that's the shaft, right, doesn't right. it? Normally, thrown out. That's right. Normally there's a Bendix or a pre-engaged yeah. starter, yeah. but that's your starter solenoid. So that's your high current solenoid there, and I and think as soon as you apply power, the whole unit slot whiz whizzes forward. Yeah. And I'll get the other one. Okay, this is the US one. Oh, this is uh, this. So you can see what's missing off this one. Yeah. Uh, so this one, but there is there's a a Make ratchet. Right, yeah. there's an overrun ratchet on it. Yeah. So this is this is quite unusual. So it just throws the whole unit forward, which to me yeah. I've never come across this before. So it, obviously on the ratchet it locks one way. Then that's does right. It? Yeah, yeah, it locks one way, and, and then of course once the engine free, started, yeah. it's it's like a until a, you turn a, it off yeah. and then yeah. yeah. Oh. So the idea is now is to and the old it. armature you say goes through it forward. Yeah, the whole thing. Oh, it's got a big commentator, a long yeah. commentator. Long, isn't long it? commutator, yeah. But this is the one that's burnt out, so I'm going to I'm going to yeah. clean the commutator up, see what I can do. Uh, with how it. big were the brushes then? About half the size of the, the length of the. Well, no, that there the brushes there. Yeah. So I think once you've applied, once it applies power here, and obviously the magnetic flux in here draws the whole thing forward. Yeah. And there must be a big spring in this end. I don't yeah. know. I haven't had it apart yet, but. Uh, oh, good. That's a good. Um, Little lecture. Yeah. Did a press record, I did. I've got, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Mike's on, so we're okay. Oh, I love